Welcome back to Visibility Vixen, episode two. Well, I think, one, of course, the world doesn't revolve around me, but two, that means I have a responsibility to show up in a big way. And three, it means that if I want, you know, to serve the world, I have to stop taking everything so personal. Welcome to the Visibility Vixen podcast, where we create space to grow our brand with intention and clarity, one episode at a time. Join us as we explore the many aspects of entrepreneurship, start loving the journey instead of the destination, and begin building a legacy that lasts. Here's your host, Michelle Lewis. I'm really excited to dive into these next two weeks because we're going to be interviewing some wonderful girlfriends of mine that inspire me every single day. And today uh, we're going to be talking to Thais and she is such a powerful coach who lives in Los Angeles that I have joined uh, what her and next week's guest Bree have co-founded called the Amplify Collective. And what these women really address and what they've changed in my life is the, what I like to call the ladypreneur loneliness. When we're working behind our laptop or our computer, we're really doing it at home. We're running this online business. And if we're not at the point yet where we have a staff or, you know, can kind of step away from it for days at a time, it's very lonely. And like, I joke that the most social interaction I sometimes get during the day is on Facebook, but that's online. And then I look to my right and there's my pug, Oliver. So that's pretty much it. So when we're in that space, it's really hard to be creative. It's really hard to create space. And it's even harder to manifest new realities every single day. So that's why I'm so excited to talk to Thais today because she's really going to dive into how to create space and how to be a ladypreneur that can embrace your femininity and step forward into your designed future. So let's dive right in. Welcome back to Ladypreneur Legacy. I am so excited about my guest today. Her name is Thais. She is wonderful. She lives here in LA with me, and I'm actually a part of the Amplify Collective, which she's going to talk about. Welcome to the show, Thais. Thank you so much, Michelle. I'm so excited to be here. Me too. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited for today's podcast. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to dive into her bio here so you can learn a little bit more about her. Thais is a women's leadership coach, speaker, writer, spiritual teacher, and the co-founder of the Amplify Collective, which I'm a part of, which is a movement changing the way women network. After struggling for years with emotional eating, anxiety, and several identity crises, she found the key to happiness, and I love this word, worthiness. And she set out to support other women to embody their spiritual journey and claim their innate power. She believes that the world will be saved by women who decide they are worthy of it. And she's also studied spirituality, yoga, psychology, and leadership and philosophy for over 10 years. And she's transformed the lives of hundreds of women world wide. She's been featured in the Washingtonian, the Huffington Post, and KTLA. Thais inspires readers through her weekly love notes over at coachthais.com. So Thais, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to dive into this with you. And I thought that maybe we could get started a little bit to talk about creating space. Yes. Oh, so I love, I love the conversation around creating space because I find that oftentimes we decide that we want something new in our lives without first going through the crap that has taken up space in our lives. And it it makes it so that nothing new can come in, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. if you have a bunch of old beliefs or old stories, old thought patterns, or even just actual physical stuff all around you, you can't possibly make something new happen without first clearing that stuff up. And so that's the the work that I love to do with my clients. And it's also something that I've found to be essential in my life, which is if I want to invite something new in, how can I first clear out the old? What do I have to get rid of? Like, do I have to get rid of three new things in my closet in order to make space for three new items from one of my favorite stores? You know, that's more practical. Or 
if we're going a little bit more spiritual, like what beliefs about, let's say, money do I currently have that's keeping me stuck at this level of income before I can manifest a new level of income? It's, it's, you, you have to first create space, clear the canvas, dump out the coffee before you can pour something really new and good into your life. That's so true. And I feel like people are becoming more and more aware of the fact that we have the power to bring new things into our life. And so meditating is getting more wide known, creating your intentions, you know, manifesting, but people tend to get frustrated because they're like, well, why isn't it changing right now? Because they don't know that first you have to create that space. So can you maybe tell us a little bit about how you do that? If you have a new intention or a new goal, what do you do to create create the space to allow that manifestation to take place? Yeah, so first, I always look to see, well, if in, in the, the conversation of manifestation, you manifest what you're ready for. And so if you're not manifesting it in your life right now, it must mean that somehow you're not ready for it, like you're blocking it in some capacity. That's like manifestation 101. Mm-hmm. So if that's the case, if that's the underlying principle behind creating something new in your life, And you first have to look at, well, why am I blocking it? Like, why am I blocking this new partnership into my life? If you want a relationship, well, what is it that's blocking me from having that in my life right now? And so you have to first go in and check out, like, what is blocking my heart from opening itself to love again? Or what am I believing about money that is keeping me stuck at having five figures instead of six figures or six instead of seven? Yeah. So once you can really look clearly at the limiting beliefs that you have around the story that you are perpetuating the lack, then it's time to clear it. Then it's time to say, well, you know what? This is no longer serving me. And one of my favorite tools for clearing is EFT or emotional freedom technique. Mm-hmm. Some people call it tapping. I love to tap. For me, it's like one of the most powerful ways to move the energy um, that's stuck in the body. And the way tapping works is you're tapping into certain pressure points in your body that's connected in Chinese medicine to the energy in your body. And so by tapping into certain places in your body, you can release that energy. So for me, tapping is like one of the best ways to clear the space as well as doing yoga and meditation. Like you said, Michelle, meditation is so, so good and so potent. Um, and if you guys, you know, that are listening are like, well meditation, I don't know, I don't know how to do it, or it seems kind of hard, I recommend starting out with some guided meditation. And there's an app that I absolutely love um, that supports you in that, and it's called Insight Timer. And it has guided meditations. It also has beautiful doms and bongs and noises that you can set for your meditation and just grab the support that you need so that you can really make space and clear the old stuff in a way that feels really good so that you can invite new stuff in. I love that. I think that is just such great practical advice and to be able to physically do something to help clear your energy and get you more aligned in your intentions is so important because we really need all the help that we can get. Um, okay. Totally. So let's talk just really briefly about the Amplify Collective, because I think that that was such a perfect example of creating space and manifesting taking place. Tell us a little bit about it and why you're so passionate about it. Sure. So uh, the Amplify Collective is a business that I run. I run two businesses and I run Amplify with my co-founder, Bree. And it was a movement that we started by accident. So when I first moved to L.A., I immediately knew that the way that women are currently connecting in L.A. is not the way that is exciting for me. The idea of going to networking events and having to, like, grab a cocktail and then and then have to, like, sell myself to these complete strangers and have to walk up to people that I knew were looking at me based on my results and whether or not I was worthy of their attention. None of that really felt good. And then the other option that I felt like I had was workshops, go attend workshops. But I, I didn't feel like that was a surefire way of meeting new people. And I'm a spiritual teacher myself, and I want to focus on me teaching my workshops and me finding my own downloads instead of sitting there listening to everybody else's downloads. And so that was out for me, too. So what, what, what was I going to do in order for me to meet new people in L.A.? It seems like such an easy desire, and I was finding a really hard time with it. 
And so that's when I decided, you know what, why don't I just throw a little mixer, a little party in the restaurant right below my building, and um, whoever came comes, and, and it'll be good. It'll be a bunch of women, and we'll have good conversation, and we can have dinner and drink wine if we want. But that's it, no pressure. And uh, the event went kind of viral on Facebook. Over 70 people said that they were going to come, which most of them I didn't know. And it was a little terrifying because the restaurant couldn't accommodate that many number of people. Um, But it ended up being great. I think about 20 women showed up from all over L.A. And Brie was there supporting the the idea because I was feeling a little sick. So she came and supported me. And once everyone left, Brie and I were like, oh, my gosh, we got to we got to do this again. And so we did it again. And it was sold out. It was an epic dinner party. And then we did it again and again and again. And by continuing to say, yes, this feels good. Yes, I'm going to do this. Yes, let's just keep going. We accidentally just created a movement. And now we sold, I think, 16 sold out events in 10 months. And it's been one of the most epic journeys. It really has been. And I'm so blessed to be a part of it. And I think the best part is that you do not let anyone talk about what they do. They have to talk about who they are. Yes, yes. And that's one of our key principles in Amplify, which is what if you could show up as fully who you are without having to feel judged and having to feel like you have to prove yourself with what you do. And so we remove the conversation of what you do from um, the event and we encourage our women to ask questions like, what are you excited about? What are you passionate about? Uh, We just had an event last night and the question that was going around is, what is a thing that you didn't know was a thing? And it just brought a lot of laughs, a lot of lightheartedness. And then as you get to know women from without the expectation of needing to know what they do, you actually create a real relationship. And then from that point, if the conversation of what you do comes up, it's from an authentic space of actually caring. And then when business stems from that place, you're much more likely to hire someone you're much more, they're much more likely to hire you. And it just becomes a much more conducive energy for the type of work that we do. Yeah. Well, and I can testify to that. It is such a beautiful thing. And even though like the first time I was like, well, I don't know how to talk to people without talking about what I do. Cause it's true. You are trying to qualify yourself, but then you realize that you are loved and accepted just for who you are and that what you do is a wonderful thing, but it's not, you know, the core base of who you are. And so I absolutely love that about the group. Yes. It's amazing. It's actually so uncomfortable for people to not talk about what they do, especially when we really are passionate about our jobs. Like I'm Mm -hmm. very passionate about my business as being a women's leadership coach and a speaker. And I could talk about that all day and I could throw all my dogmatic statements on you and my beliefs until I'm blue in the face. It's very easy for me to talk about what I do and I'm very passionate about it. However, if we don't first get people interested in us before we talk about what we do, it feels like we're putting ourselves up on a soapbox. Mm-hmm. And they don't have a genuine desire to actually want to know yet. So you're kind of forcing your way onto somebody, and that just doesn't really feel good. So when we started saying, all right, instead of talking about what you do, how about just talk about what you're passionate about? If it happens to be part of your business, that's great. But if it doesn't, if you're one of the people that work 9 to 5 and you hate what you do, and you have side hobbies that you feel like are expresses who you are more, then you have the space to talk about that. It's a much better conversation. It really is. Well, I'm so excited. Let's jump into the interview. And the first thing I want to ask you is that I like to encourage my students to find their big why, which is the huge reason why they're moving forward in their business, like how they actually want to change our world. So my dear, what is your big why? I love this question so much, Michelle. And you sent the questions ahead of time, but I purposefully didn't look at them because Ooh. I love just being organic with what comes up. And it's so funny because Absolutely. just before this podcast interview, I'm creating the MailChimp newsletter sending out to send out to the women who attended our event last night. And it can be so easy to get caught up in the nitty gritty stuff of the business, whether it's you know, newsletters or Facebook posts or online marketing. I mean, it's just so easy to get caught into the details and looking at numbers and and thinking that that's life. And what I found is that when I connect with my why and when I connect with what excites me, it actually allows me to do the little tasks with a lot more vigor and energy. And so for me, my big why is really to support women to rise up 
And, and, and the only reason why that's my why is because for so long I didn't rise up. For so long I was so scared of my own power. It's like I feel like um, it, uh, I read this book when I was younger, and it's about these, um, these kids, these teenagers who learn that they have superpowers, like they can, you know, move mountains or, or the waves or the sun or whatever. You know, they have these superpowers, but because they don't know they have them yet, they use, the superpower uses them. And they're mm-hmm. all, you know, troublemakers and they're just not really good human beings or whatever beings they are. Mm-hmm. Because they don't know how to use their power. And I found that that was me for a very long time. I had this immense power within me to do really good things with the world, but I didn't know how to use it. And so it was using me. And it led me to having serious binge eating episodes for seven years. It led me into huge identity crises. I had a dark night of the soul moment where I just hit rock bottom. I had lost all of my friends. I didn't know who I was. Um, and so when I started to realize that, holy holy moly, I have this tremendous power within me, and it's my responsibility to do something about it and to leverage it and to use it for good, that's when I started entering the spiritual path, and that's when I started to realize that we always have a choice. We can allow ourselves to be victims of life and to feel sorry for ourselves, or we can do something about it. And so as I've gone down my venture of learning more about who I am and what I represent and what excites me and what feels good in me, I've then been able to teach others the same. And that level of rising up of saying yes to our purpose, saying yes to being leaders, saying yes to allowing the message within us to transform us and to transform the world, it it increases the goodness of the world. So it's like life spreads light. And the more that I shine my light, the more I give permission for others to do the same. So long story short, I feel like that's my why is simply to be a service to the world and support women to rise up. I love that. What was your aha moment when you knew you were finally in your life's purpose? Oh my gosh. I feel like purpose is such a trippy, tricky conversation because so many of us feel that if we are not living a life purpose right now, then we're not really being, um, effective in our lives and so it kind of leads us into this desperate uh, search for our purpose and it can often lead us feeling very depressed Mm -hmm. and um, so so purpose is is a really amazing and tricky conversation and I would say that for me when I first when I taught my first yoga class and when I when all my students were in Shavasana and I was just sitting there watching them and my whole body was just vibrating in this energy of holy shiz, like this is my life, this is what I get to do, that's when I realized that I was living my purpose. And it's not even because of teaching yoga and it's not even because I chose to do that, but really it's because I just took the little steps necessary to shape my life in the direction that I wanted it to go because I was initially uh geared to go to law school and I was gonna you know go go be in law and yoga seemed really fruitful for me and really weird that spiritual hippie dippies you know I had all these labels around yoga and wellness and I just kept saying yes to where life was taking me and I just kept saying yes to the little things within me that said no try this no, go to this yoga class. No, try it with this teacher. And that's what ultimately led me to where I am now. So I would say for the, you know, your listeners that are like trying to figure out your purpose, just live your life and just live your life fully and just mm-hmm. honor the callings in your heart that takes you to random places. And before you know it, not only will you have stumbled into your purposeful life, but you realize that you've been on purpose all along because you really can't mess up this thing called life. Yeah, Absolutely. What's your biggest focus right now? So I'm growing two businesses, which is for many people, one business is enough. <laughs> so two businesses is a little, it's a lot. It's a lot to handle. I, um, so I run the Amplify Collective with Bree, and we have a whole team of interns this summer that's supporting us in growing our business. And so managing them and making sure that we're leveraging them and that they are learning what, you know, they want to be learning. So that's been a big focus of mine, but also growing my own business. I mean, I coach, so I have an amazing group of women that I coach one-on-one. Uh, and then I do speaking opportunities and possibly going to start writing my books in. Um, so I have a lot of focus. Yeah. But, but despite 
and all the projects that I have going on, the underlying mission is always the same, which is how can I be of best service to the world? How can I be a miracle worker today? And so I try not to let the projects and the tasks get too ahead of the purpose of what I'm doing, what I'm doing, which is everything that I do is infused with love and infused with intention. And uh, so no matter how many projects I got going on, I feel like I try to laser in on what I'm doing at any particular time with as much love as possible so that no matter how much I am doing, it is impacting the world the way I want it to be impacting the world, if that makes sense. It totally does. I love that. Okay. What life lesson has been more valuable than gold to you? What life lesson? Oh my that's gosh. A deep one. Yeah, that's a, that's a big one. You know, I'm something that I, I'm an only child. And, um, as I grew older, I kind of started to realize that the world didn't revolve around me. And that was kind of a big deal for me because, and I, and I say it with, with total love for myself, but I, you know, when you're an only child and everything you do, uh, is only for you, uh, it's a huge paradigm shift to realize that your words and your actions actually impact the lives of others in a bigger way than we can ever imagine. Mm -hmm. And when I, started to realize this in, in my college years that I'm responsible not only for myself, but for the world. Like I'm responsible for the energy I bring into a room. I'm responsible for the words that come out of my mouth. I'm responsible for the actions that I take and how it's, how it's showing up in the world. I realized that as much as it's fun to have the world revolve around me, it's also very exhausting to mm -hmm. have everything be so personal and have everything have to be about me and have everything um, have to cater to my very specific needs in order for me to be happy. So mm -hmm. in that shift, it was a big spiritual shift for me in realizing, one, of course, the world doesn't revolve around me, but two, that means I have a responsibility to show up in a big way. And three, it means that if I want you know, to serve the world, I have to stop taking everything so personal. And I have to start yes. to develop a sense of not tough skin, because I don't think we need to toughen up, but uh, a thicker skin where it's, it's just the, in, the actions of the world doesn't necessarily have to make me mean something, or it doesn't mean something about me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was a huge lesson for me. And, and I think it's still always an uh, unfolding process of how much are we making our results mean something about ours? Like, if we don't get the sales that we want, then we think that that means that we're bad and we're wrong. And then it leads us into a hole of unworthiness. Or mm -hmm. if we, you know, don't get the grade that we wanted on our, on our paper or whatever, then we feel so bad about ourselves. And that badness, that unworthiness is a choice. It, we don't have to make it mean something about us, but we do because we think that it's going to grow us. And then unfortunately, it does just the opposite. I love that. Well, I'm an only child too. And you and I are very similar because we were born a week apart. So we're definitely, I, love it. I know we're definitely more emotional beings and I have to remind myself every day to not take it personally. And I don't know what it yeah. is when you're more in tune and a little bit more, you know, emotionally based, but you, you tend to do that even when you don't realize it. So it's a great constant check, especially as a woman to remember to not take it personally. My goodness. Oh, yeah, especially in relationships. That's a big one yes. where it's very easy for us to take things very personal and to make it be about us instead of being about the partnership. And mm -hmm. then it becomes a war against your partner versus a team. Mm -hmm. Oh, so true. Oh, my goodness. We could talk about that all day. Okay, so moving <laughs> forward, what is your favorite daily habit? Oh, that is so good. <laughs> I would say... So it's so funny, you know, one of the things that I'm processing and I'm learning every day is what does it, what, what does it mean for me to have preferences, like my favorite versus my not favorite? Mm -hmm. And I found that the more opinions I have about things, the less happy I am. And it's really funny because I'm a very, I can be a very opinionated person and I have the ways that people have to be. And the more I think about it and realize that when we get so caught up in our preferences, 
we don't allow something new to come into our lives. Like if we have an mm-hmm. opinion about, um, you know, who should marry who, and then we end up realizing that someone in our family is actually marrying that who, and we cut them off from our lives, we inherently cut off really amazing energy that could be present in our lives. And so I'm trying to like, you know, try to navigate what does it look like for me to kind of drop some of my opinions um, and then how to like, how can I feel good and be happy on a more consistent basis based on certain preferences and not based on other preferences. And I know this sounds totally out there. It does what it if, all. No, no, no. Yeah. What if our preferences and our opinions on things are actually keeping us from happiness that is fully present here in our lives? Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. I'm picturing So that doesn't like, really answer your question. But. It does, though, because I'm picturing, like, getting a microphone and then every morning before you leave to go about your day, like, doing a mic drop and having that be your opinion drop where you just drop all of your preferences and all of your opinions and go out to your day without any kind of preconceived notions. I think that's great. Yeah, and it's one of the principles that I teach in my five mindsets to be a leader is removing meaning from a situation before you enter the situation is one of the best ways for you to be completely open to what comes in so that you can, if you're really present with the people in front of you, then you give them space to be all of who they are. And that's really one of the most important roles as leader is that we don't input input our preconceived notions of life onto other people. Mm -hmm. And the more that we can give space for people to show up fully as who they are, and we see them as the divine perfect beings that they are, the more they rise up to that occasion. And uh, I find this to be so true within my clients. If I go into a client session expecting them to have been a certain, you know, have done a certain thing or been a certain way, I'm not really seeing them for who they are. I'm seeing them for my idealized image of who they are. Mm -hmm. And that's not fair for them. That means I'm not really being present to them. I'm being present to my own ego. And so the more that I can say, you know what? You know, I'm coming into this session with a completely open mind. Whatever happens, happens. I'm just fully present here with them. And I see the divine perfection. They rise into that occasion and they step into that space of perfection. And then the sessions that we have end up being really deep and really powerful for them because I'm not transposing my shoulds on them. Mm Mm-hmm. I feel like we all need a pocket Thais so that when we go about our day, she can be like, oh, no, no, you need to drop that expectation. Oh, no, let's go into this and not attach meaning. That would be really handy. So if you could start working on that, I'd really appreciate it. (laughs) Love it. I love it. Okay, Thais, are you ready for the red carpet remix? I'm going to throw some questions at you. Awesome. Okay, what's your favorite movie? Oh my, okay, I'm so not rapid firing here. You know what I love? I love, um, uh, what is that movie called? See, how can I even be my favorite? Oh, here we go, Top Gun. Top Gun, give me some Tom Cruise, give me, mm, done, Mm -hmm. Top Gun. Mm -hmm. Okay, (laughs) what is your biggest strength? My biggest dream. Mm. I want to write a New York Times bestseller. Love it. How do you handle fear? Welcome it with open arms because fear, presence of fear means that I'm going after something big. Love it. What's the tool you absolutely love? And this can be online or physical. Uh, so I love Insight Timer, what I said before, the meditation app. It's really life changing. But I'll also say I love Asana. It's a, um, a tool that we use for project management within Amplify and within my own business. And it keeps me on track for what I have to do. And it's just, it's free and it's so super helpful. If you could live in your dream location, would it be ocean, forest, desert, or mountains? Uh, ocean, hands down. Oh yes. Me too. Me too. Okay. So we're <laughs> going to wrap this up, but I have Uh, three more questions for you. And the first one is what part of your life was a David versus Goliath story? Yeah, I would say it was me against me. And I find that we tend to be our own worst enemy, 
And it's really, I feel like whenever we're stepping into something new, like quitting our jobs and going into full-time entrepreneurship or saying yes to the transformation that we're feeling called to endeavor on or coming into a new partnership, we tend to be our own worst enemy and really hold ourselves back. And it becomes a battle in our heads between the heart that wants to something new versus the mind and the logic who says, no way, this is too scary. You can't do this. And, um, yeah, I feel like that it's so it's a biggest debilitator because, you know, it's within ourselves. And for me, when I decided I was going to quit my job, move across the country, uh, start my business full time and move in with my partner of two years, uh, there was a, a huge hero's journey in that drive across the country where I battled myself almost every day. Like, what are you doing? Are you sure you're doing the right thing? Like, what if this isn't what you're supposed to be doing? What if it all goes down to crap? You know, what if you fail? And versus the other part of me, that was like, hey, just go. Just enjoy this journey. This is the best journey of your life. This is your life. Like, there's nowhere else to go. Like, you are safe. You are in a container that the universe has created for you. There is no such thing as fail. And the more that I listened and leaned on love, the more the, the fear got louder. Because that's often what happens when we choose love. It's not that the fear goes away. It's that the fear gets louder and calls for our attention more and more and more. And it's our constant commitment and decision to choose love, to choose faith, to choose perseverance over fear that eventually makes the fear not seem so scary. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a process. It's not a, a 10 steps to living a big life, you know? It's like it's just a continual commitment to saying yes to your heart and to listen to the whispering of your soul. Mm, yeah, I have, I have goosebumps. That was really good. <laughs> mm. um, okay, what is the number one piece of encouragement you would like to give a ladypreneur right now who's feeling invisible? Yeah, I would say do the spiritual practices you need to do to feel at home within yourself. Because if you never, if you don't feel at home within yourself, you're never going to feel at home in this world. And the world is going to constantly challenge you and bring up opportunities to shake you off center, to teach you how to come back home. And so coming back home, coming to center within yourself, coming to a grounded place within yourself where you're not self-heating and self-deprecating and self-judging all the time is one of them. It's like the number one responsibility of a leader. The more that you can say yes to self-love and doing the practices that encourages self-love, the easier it is for you to love others and hold space and transformation for others. And if we are going to create a movement where we want women to follow us, we first have to have faith and confidence in ourselves. And so that inner work, that saying, you know, like I'm choosing to, to go within and do the practices that I know are necessary for me to develop more self-love and develop more self-compassion and and embrace all of my feelings instead of being at war with my feelings, the easier it is for you to navigate this world and to feel more empowered as you say yes to the bigger callings, the bigger endeavors, the bigger opportunities that you have. Yes, that, my dear, is a wonderful gold nugget of life lesson. And I know that all of us at some point feel a little bit insecure, struggle a little bit with our online presence or if we're having haters and all that kind of stuff. But you're so right. Once we dig deep inside and have that self-acceptance and self-love, it's so powerful. So amazing. So Thank powerful. you so much for all of your inspirational words and your wisdom and being vulnerable with us today. It's just so wonderful. And I would like to have our listeners know where to find you. So where can they find you? Yeah, so you can find me on my website, coachthais.com. And it's Thais like Thailand, T-H-A-I, and then an S like Sam, coachthais.com. Um, and uh, yeah, you'll find all my love notes. I call my blogs my love notes uh, to support women in claiming their worth and stepping into leadership. And I actually have a leadership toolkit available on my website right now that uh, will share that I shared with you the five required mindsets of any leader or change maker or badass woman on this planet, as well as my share your message like a boss free training that I, that I teach every year on how to empower you to put your message out there in a bigger way. So you can catch all of that on my website. And I'm also on Instagram at Coach Thais. Um, and also on Snapchat. And I've been like really obsessed with Snapchat lately. I'm having so much fun over there and it's at Coach Tate. Uh, 
so yeah, find me there. We're, it's so fun, Michelle. I'm like You've obsessed been with like it. snapping you need everything. To help me it's, because I don't understand okay. it. <laughs> I will help you because it's the best thing ever. <laughs> I'm just like swiping left and right, and I'm like, what is going on here? Like, oh my just... god, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> awesome. Well, you guys know where to find her now. I will put all of those links below. Please claim that free training because there's no quicker way to propel yourself forward. And I am so happy you were here today. Thank you so much, Thais. Blessings to you, my dear. And I just so appreciate you coming on the show today. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks for listening in today to the Visibility Vixen podcast. Subscribe now and share with a fellow Vixen who wants to start building their visibility. For more fire in your life and brand, visit visibilityvixen.com.